Hi people, I'm just gonna show you guys how easy it is to remove supports we use pet G with um, PLA. So in this case the white part is PLA and the red is pet G. And as you can see here I used support interface. Let me see support interface and you can see that there is a tiny tiny darker square further up which is a solid layer of PLA I used to get a perfectly smooth surface and if you want to know why that is the matching side but the underside of the supported interface see If I can get you to see it clearly, it's not easy. Perfectly smooth, just like if you're printing on top. Now, how hard is it to remove? Normally, when you print with PLA on PLA, it is really, really hard to remove. Let's see here now. not hard at all and there is really nothing stopping you from printing this now there is one problem with this uh, because of the less adhesion you get from pla uh, you should never like in this case i use also this small piece on top that this is like a square uh, i purposely set it to not iron because you need a certain adhesion to the pet G on the PLA. If you set that to be ironed, or you set everything to be ironed, the P, uh, pet G will not stick or let the PLA stick again. So, uh, even if you set it to not iron, and when you import it as a separate object, it makes it easy to uh go in and just for that specific object you can turn off ironing so you can have ironing for the whole main body to make it smooth but you can turn off just for that little object that interfaces with your uh your uh, your main object you cannot turn off ironing for the interface the support but if you have your own small set like here you can turn off ironing and you can create perfect uh, transitions to the normal PA and PLA and uh, as you can see on the underneath this is actually how wide I put the support and this is how thick I have it the number of interface layers is five and uh, the solid piece of interface uh, object I have here for pet G is 0 0.4 millimeters and uh, yeah, it it makes it possible to make perfect inserts like this. And also, it makes it possible to create supports inside holes like this. The easy way to remove the supports inside the holes is just take a plier and you stick it in between the supports and then you just twist. And the clearance distance to the sides I have set to, let's see what did I use here, one second. Uh, support 0 0.2 millimeters. I used as support object XY distance. That is the distance basically all around the supports on the sides, making it easy to remove. If you have it less than that, it can sort of stick a little bit and it can be harder to remove, but all in all, it's, uh, it's pretty easy to remove.
because I print with PLA as the middle main support interface it makes it possible to just twist and remove the middle parts and what you then do is just go in with a tool like this and basically just hang on I'll, I'll see if I can show you go in between the layers and there you have it a perfect top wall that said you remember the square I had on the other interface on the top here I use a similar square for 0.4 millimeters at the bottom I just have normal interface because it is already properly supported so the reason i use that is is on the top so again on the top of the hole that needs to be supported i use 0.4 millimeters of support interface let's see if i can turn the thingy around so you can see here the red one there is pet g and above that is a uh, a solid layer of uh, objects as well. Let's see if I can show that support object. I can change that color to black. It's not so easy to see, but inside here, uh, let me see. You can see it barely showing inside there. I have a 0 0.5 millimeter a uh, thick, uh, solid uh, PLA uh, bracket, so that when I slice this, it will basically create a. Because because I use the red pet G, it thinks that is part of the main object, so it will use that as the wall, and then you straight off start with uh, support interfaces after that. So basically, what I do is what you can see here <clears throat> so it comes up prints normal support and then it used the patchy interface layers and then I have a small 0.4 uh, interface solid object and then I have a small solid object that it is it's its own object and a printout in PLA same as the main object and you can see that it interacts and create a, a proper wall and support on top and then it just starts with normal supports after that and the result is uh, and the result is perfectly square holes that has absolutely no trace of having support filament that can fit a similar insert like this perfectly so pet g and pla is really really great but there are some things you need to think about flush volumes um i tried to use you have to remember pet g and pla don't mix so well when you flush uh and if you set the values too high you will basically fill your poop chute with flushing filament and sometimes it cannot uh clear it from the nozzle and then it will drag that down and start printing with a big piece of poop uh, dragging after the nozzle and I found a good um, you can see here normally if you if you have the wrong um, flushing of between the filaments you would get red lines so this is the same object, but printed with the wrong settings. You can see there's clearly like red lines in between here. Now that is due to 
uh, flushing of filaments between filament changes that is too small. So basically it doesn't clear the PET G from the nozzle before it starts the PLA and vice versa, it doesn't clear the PLA from the nozzle before it starts the PET G. What happens then is that you, you get a mix of PET G and PLA on the lines where it interfaces and changes and to avoid this you have to adjust your flush volume on this i set the flush volumes i think to i was experimenting a bit so in in the orca slicer you have up here uh wait okay so talking about this um yeah flushing volumes i was about to show you in uh, in uh, inside settings so you go here flushing volumes in orca slicer it's on the uh, you can use it on the prepare as well same place and flushing volumes you click there and you can either you can change the multiplier here which do a certain percentage um i i tried that it gave some bad results so the original value here is uh, if you click recalculate it says 586 that is too much in my opinion and uh, 338 is too little so it's from pla to pet g it will flush 3.38 uh, i think it's millimeters i don't know or cubic millimeters but it's just a value anyway so this one uh, let's see what was it I had here yeah so I set this one here from PLA to PET G I put that at 380 and from PET G to PLA I make it flush 500 and uh, originally I had both of these at 700 so that one was 700 and that one was 700 and what you get then is it basically so what you get then is monster poops like this which it cannot release so it gets hanging after the uh, when you start printing it drags it along over the print and it can cause problems during print so I had to adjust that and as I said, I also tried to lower this, and when I lowered this, I had even, I have smaller flushing than what you see here. And that is when I got the bleed like this. Basically, it's not able to clear the filament from the nozzle before I start printing. And you get these layers of mixed with PLA and pit G. And safely say, I could... You cannot really see it so well, but there is an open line in the filament. There, you could see it for a split second. It's like, where you have the separation, there's like an open line almost, and I could just put a, a wedge in between here and break it off. So it's not solid. So I set that to, from PET G to PLA is 500, and from... PLA to PET G is 380. Those are the values I use. And this is the result you get when you do that. You can see there is no bleed on this. So to compare those, that is a huge difference. Okay. In addition, when you have too much of a bleed, uh, the supports are almost impossible to remove because basically it's mixing the filaments together and on the other one here uh, it's literally bleeding uh, patchy into the PLA on the sides of the supports so it's, yeah it's, it's 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 not good but as you can see here I have managed to find the correct values so from PETG to PLA 500 from PLA to pet g 380 i don't know how those values would work for you guys but for me those seems to be 
giving a really nice results, no bleeding or anything. And uh, the supports are easy to remove. Okay, so that was just uh, not a quick video, but a um, helpful video today about uh, flushing and finding values and stuff when it comes to using support, uh, PetGS supporting for PLA and removal of it. So thanks for watching and see you in the next one.